So I'm sitting here running all of these experiments with uh, supercapacitors here, and I thought, you know, maybe I'll make a quick video here showing you some of these experiments. And this is all actually for a project I have coming up to use supercapacitors in a trig board project so that, you know, you can imagine a trig board being powered directly from a supercapacitor instead of lithium batteries and uh, or double a batteries or triple a's whatever but super capacitors in addition to some sort of energy harvesting device like a cheap solar panel or, or even these really cool flexible uh, solar film panels here which are actually uh, able to harvest energy indoors so I'll be getting to that soon, but for now I'm just actually qualifying supercapacitors for the trig board just to see if I can actually wake the trig board up and get a push notification sent out using just a supercapacitor. So I've been running a ton of experiments here and uh, thought maybe I'd make a quick video. So let's get started. So usually when I work with supercaps in designs, it's always been for you know, keeping an RTC going or holding a GPS's uh, memory up, you know, things like that where it's very low power, you just need some energy storage and you don't want to ship a product with a lithium coin cell. And uh, for those applications, it's pretty simple. You just choose the cheapest capacitor that will get the job done, like these guys here are super cheap one farad capacitors. So when you have an application like the trig board where we have to supply current to the ESP32 when it wakes up, that's when things get a little bit more challenging because in the low power state we're pulling maybe one or two microamps. That's no big deal for any supercapacitor, but when you have those high TX currents of, you know, a couple hundred milliamps, the ESR, the equivalent series resistance inside the capacitor becomes a huge factor. And I'll actually show you that in action with a cheap capacitor versus a slightly more expensive capacitor. But you might be wondering why even bother with super caps at all? You know, we could easily just have a lithium cell hooked up to the solar panel and, and recharge that. You might have seen a board kind of like this where you can hook the battery straight up to it and then you're solar input and then your system load and that could work as well but I'm kind of interested in using super caps for this because they are much more robust in terms of continuous charging and discharging every single day as well as being able to fully discharge all the way down you know with the uh, lithium cell we've got the protection circuitry up top here that has the under voltage lockout you know, you can't go below a certain voltage, and these cut out typically, you know, 2.7, 2.8 volts or so. Whereas with the super cap, we'll be able to charge this baby all the way up to 4 volts, discharge it down to 2 volts or even below, which is the full operating input voltage range of the trig board. You know, I designed this board to have a wide input voltage range on purpose to support many different battery configurations. But with the super cap, maybe we can take advantage of that entire range by charging it up to the max. In fact, this one can charge all the way up to 5.5 volts. So if I set up a panel to charge it up to 5 volts, and then it can discharge all the way down to, you know, 1.8, 1.5 volts or whatever for the trig board, man, we can get a lot of life then out of the super cap. So just real quick, I want to benchmark the trig board and see what the average current draw is when it's on, how long it's on for. Um, and we can look at the sleep current, which you see here. So we're applying four volts to the trig board. The average current draw is just about one microamp at four volts. And uh, right now what it's configured to do is wake and log data to a Google Sheet. And over at the Docs page, you can see this example here, log data to Google Sheet using if this, then that. And I've got a full tutorial right here you can follow to set this up. All right, so I've got my Google Sheet up. I'm going to wake the trig board up with a simple magnetic door sensor. You see the LED turned on, and boom, there is the new data there logged to the Google Sheet. So we've got contact is opened. There is the battery voltage. Let's go look, oop, I didn't catch that. There it is right there. So let's look at the average current draw of while this is on. 
So about 67 or so milliamps. The on time was just about four seconds. So I'm going to call it 70 milliamps at uh, five seconds. Okay, so that's what we're going to design for. All right, just for fun, we'll go ahead and close the door. And there you see trig board wakes back up. About five seconds later, boom, there we have it up in the Google Docs. All right, so now we know what kind of load we're dealing with. 70 milliamp average current for five seconds. And ideally, you know, from a super cap, we would get multiple wakes, but one wake is equal to this. But what's also important to look at is the peak current seen here, which is about 300 something milliamps. We'll call it 400 milliamps is the peak current. So if we take a capacitor, one of these super caps here, and you see this is a 2.5 farad cap. This cheapy one here is a 1 farad. How can you estimate how many wakes you can get from that cap? All right, so we just look at I is equal to C D V D T. So this is the change in voltage. This is the change in time, the capacitance, and the current. So we're going to use this to kind of get an idea of how many wakes we can get with these super caps. So the change in voltage, what we're going to do is discharge it from 4 volts down to 2 volts. So this will be 2 volts. The time we is what we want to figure out. We know the capacitance. It's either going to be 1 farad or 2.5. And we know the current is going to be 70 milliamps average over there. Some of you already might know what's going to happen next here when we start testing these things. But for now, let's just assume an ideal world. So just rearranging that a little bit, we're always going to discharge only 2 volts, 4 volts down to 2, times the capacitance, and divide that by the current, which will be 70 milliamps. Kind of want to try a, let's actually change that to 100 milliamps for now. Just keep it easy. And then that will equal time. So the 1 farad should give us 20 seconds. The 2.5 should give us 50 seconds. So that could mean 20 seconds. We have a 5 second wake time. That means we could get 4 wakes from the 1 farad cap. We could get 10 wakes from the 2.5 farad cap. So let's now actually run some real life experiments and see what the results are. Alright, so the first experiment I want to run is with the super cheap super cap here that I don't even remember where it came from, so I don't have a data sheet on it or anything. Uh, but if we look at the voltage here, we're at 3.9 volts, so that should be good. Remember that we've got 20 seconds worth of wake time on here, uh, theoretically, so if we plug this into the trig board, we should get at least one wake, right? All right, so as soon as we apply power to the trig board, it's going to connect to the Wi-Fi network and then through if this then that get the data over to the Google Sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. Now watch the LED here. Whoa. Fail. So did not even get through um, connecting to the Wi-Fi network. So this capacitor is totally dead. All right, and just for fun, we're going to hook some gear up to this capacitor to see why it can't even give us one wake on the trig board, even though theoretically one farad should give us at least 20 seconds worth of wake time. So what you're seeing here is we've got a power supply hooked up here to the capacitor through a 10 ohm resistor. And that's to current limit this somewhat, because as soon as we apply 4 volts to a completely dead capacitor, that's going to be a dead short to this power supply. So we need to current limit that somewhat. So we're going to recharge it up to 4 volts. And then these leads you see here go to my constant current uh, dummy load. And we're going to apply a 0.1 amp or 100 milliamp load to this capacitor and see what happens because that's the whole reason I actually use 100 milliamps here is because that's the lowest current draw I can uh, configure that for. So let's see what happens. Okay, applying 4 volts. There you see the huge inrush current there limited by the 10 ohm resistor. 
And this is going to look very familiar to what you learn in school uh, with a simple RC charge discharge uh, circuit. So you see the high current and then it's slowly going down as the capacitor is charging up getting closer to the 4 volts. And if we go over here and look at the voltage across the capacitor, which is what we've got hooked up here, you see that also looks familiar. So starting down at 0 volts, quickly climbing up to 4 volts. And uh, this doesn't really have great resolution, but you get the idea. So we're pretty close to 4 volts there, which I'm going to say is good enough. The current draw right now is in a couple milliamps. So what I'm going to do is just kill the power and just letting that stabilize a little bit. You see we're at about 3.8 volts, which for what we're doing here is going to be fine for the experiment. So let's go ahead. You see the test current is going to be 100 milliamps, 0.1 amps. We're going to cut out at 2 volts, so just about 2 volts of drop. Let's see what happens. We're going to start it. So this is exactly what I wanted to show you because, you know, we calculated 20 seconds. We got a total on time for 10 seconds here. But more interestingly is what happened as soon as it hit 2 volts. So the constant current uh, regulator, as soon as it hits 2 volts, it lets go of the load. And you see here that the supercapacitor voltage jumped back up. Now this tells us immediately that the ESR is really high on this capacitor. So as we're applying that 100 milliamp load, we are creating a voltage drop in the capacitor that we're not seeing on a low current load. Let me, let me actually draw this out. So you've got this ESR built into the capacitance here. So on very light loads, you know, like if you're trying to keep an RTC up or like I said, like GPS up or something like that, where it's like microamps, you're not going to create hardly any voltage drop here in this resistance. But when you start pulling 100 milliamps, or like you saw 400 milliamp peak currents with the uh, ESP32, suddenly your entire voltage out here collapses. Because it's simple Ohm's law, I times R. So the higher the I, oops. So the higher the I, the bigger the voltage drop there. And then as soon as the current goes away, no more voltage drop, which is why we see this huge jump back up here on the voltage across the super cap. All right, so enough of this nonsense. Let's get into the good known good capacitor that I actually sourced from DigiKey and I actually know what the ESR is and I'll pull that product page up here in a second. Uh, but by the way, you can calculate these things out. Like, you know, we talked about the peak current being what, 400 uh, milliamps or so, yeah. So if the ESR of the capacitor was one ohm, that's almost a half a volt dropped just in the ESR. Uh, what if it was two ohms? That's a full volt or, you know, even more, you know. So your entire voltage, if you only have two volts to work with, you know, you could quickly collapse that entire thing out, which is what happened with the trig board. So here's the guy I'm working with, 2.5 farad. 5.5 volts, you always got to pay attention to the voltage. And if we just scroll down here with the DigiKey stuff, you'll see, where's it at? 140 milliohms. So 140.14 times 0.4 is just 56 millivolt drop. That's nothing, we can deal with that. So, and we could probably even go with a cheaper capacitor because this guy's kind of expensive. Yeah, you see three bucks. I mean, we're almost getting to the point of the, you know, that's what a lithium battery costs. So anyway, uh, we're hooked up to this guy now. Same test. Let's first charge it up. All right, there she goes, charging and charging. Uh, we're charging through a 10 ohm resistor here. And I had, was using this big, you know, I don't know what this thing is, 10 watt resistor here because I was trying to use it to... Uh, calculate uh, the time constant for these things using the current. Anyway, another experiment altogether. But uh, by the way, a lot of people ask what this tool is. Almost in every video I show it off, uh, this is the OT arc. All right, so we're at uh, 3.9 volts or so, so we can go ahead and run this test. Let's kill the voltage, come back over just to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, 
we're good. And 0.1 amp down to 2 volts. Let's let her rip. All right, so there you have it. The test is, is done. You see the nice, perfect discharge there, nice straight line, pulling 100 milliamps all the way down, starting at 4 volts, down to 2 volts. Total time was 1 minute 9 seconds. Actually, not too bad. Exceeded the theoretical uh, calculation there of 50 seconds. Pretty good. We'll take it. Um, down here it actually calculates what the capacity is as if you're discharging a battery so 2 milliamp hour and what we'll do now is charge it back up and plug it into a trig board and see what happens alright so we're charged back up pretty close to 4 volts 3.9 something I'm gonna go ahead and kill the power supply and instead of applying the constant current load we're gonna take a trig board and I've got Somewhere over here, I've got a JST connector hooked up to the super cap. Oh, I need my contact hooked up. We'll do that with a switch. Let's get ready here with the Google Sheet. Let's just clear all of these out. Cool. And let's plug in the super cap and count the wakes. Okay. So that's a good sign. We got one full wake, boom, up on the Google Sheet. So about four volts. Well, let's close the door, see if we get more. Theoretically, we should get at least 10. Um, if we use 70 milliamps, we should get like 14 or so, right? Okay, I can't believe it, but we just got a push notification uh, with the battery voltage measurement there of 1.76. I'm not very confident that the next one's going to work, but let's go ahead and try. Oh, yeah, no. You see the LED there? Yeah, so there you have it. Can't believe it, but 16 wakes. The theoretical, if you remember, if we had just 100 milliamps, was 50 seconds worth, which would be just 10 wakes. But if we use 70 milliamps, it should be about 14 wakes. So actually the calculations are kind of close to what we see here. And uh, by the way, it sleeps at one or two microamps. We're not really taking that into account, but so I'm thinking this is really good because we have 17 wakes here available. And by the way, we're only charging this to four volts. We could charge it to five volts and the trig board does support a five volt input. So we could charge it up even more and get more wakes out of it. But let's just assume four volts for now, because what I'm thinking is that we could have a board that uses supercapacitor energy as the primary source of power to the trig board and use only a lithium battery as a backup source. So if there's no super cap there, use the lithium battery, you know, otherwise super cap, right? And I'm thinking that could be really cool for a lot of applications. You know, we've got indoor solar I'm working on, obviously outdoor solar. Um, I mean, we can even expand on this even more besides uh, solar applications. But um, with 17 wakes or 16 wakes here available to us, even in the solar application, that's 17 wakes going into the night when you can't recharge, which should be plenty for more, most applications, you know, doors, windows, your mailbox, flood sensors, garage sensors, you know, whatever. As long as you are able to recharge during the day, this should work pretty good. And, you know, because the trig board only pulls one or two microamps in that standby current or in that standby mode, uh, recharging should be no problem, even with one of these indoor panels, which is only putting out, you know, tens of microamps tops uh, indoors. But uh, anyway, that's kind of just a totally random video of experiments, and I thought, yeah, maybe somebody would find that kind of interesting. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.